Hi Church, Brendan Shah here to present you our midweek devotion. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 to 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, for me, growing up as a Christian, I normally don't need a reminder to pray when I'm going through difficult times. Prayer is like that knee-jerk reflex for almost every Christian when they're going through suffering. And I've seen that kind of response as well in the midst of all the COVID-19 pandemic that's going on. I've seen that kind of response in our church body as well. We are getting together, we are gathering together every single night to pray in hopes that the situation will improve. And we thank God that the situation is improving in Malaysia as well. However, we can't say the same when it comes to globally what the pandemic is doing to the entire world. Some have predicted that we will be facing the greatest economic collapse ever since the Great Depression. And even right now, as I'm recording this, I'm hearing news that there might be a second wave of the pandemic coming. See, when we're going through suffering or difficult times, the worst in us really shows up. We are embittered in our present and we worry about our future. And for me personally, prayer is starting to become more like drudgery. I find myself saying the same words over and over again. And at times also, I find prayer can be quite boring. And in extreme cases, when God doesn't seem to improving the situations that we are going through, we may even wonder, does He even care enough for us? See, the author of Hebrews saw this downward spiral of faith in the, li- in the lives of the early Christians as well. Now, these people were persecuted for their faith. And having gone through all the pain and suffering, they were on the brink of abandoning God altogether. So how does the author encourage these Christians to persevere in their faith? He introduces the office of a high priest. Now, for us, we might not be able to find that something very familiar, but the office of the high priest would definitely click if you were a Christian back in the day. See, high priests are those who are appointed to act as mediator between God and man. They conduct rituals of animal sacrifices in order to atone for man's sins. Ironically, these high priests as well need atonement for their own sins. So they would need to sacrifice animals for their sins. But But for a high priest, this disposition is what enables them to be empathetic and understanding to anyone who has sinned. How, do, how does that relate to us today? Does that mean we need to appoint high priests in our churches and conduct rituals of animal sacrifices? Of course not. The fact is, we do have a high priest already. The great high priest, Jesus Christ, the one whom God appointed to act as mediator as that as mediator between man and God. Christ lived like you and me, like as a man. He was tempted in every way and yet he did not sin. That means that when I go through temptation or when I'm on the brink of abandoning God, that means I can when I surrender that to him, Christ understands. Christ has been tempted just as I am being tempted right now. What else? Christ also, in His great love for us, was being made as a sacrifice. He did not make as an animal sacrifice for the sins of the world. He became the sacrifice for us and and the atonement for our sins. That means, when I refuse to pray, when I distrust in God, Christ died even for that. And He has paid for the penalty for that sin of mine. But we know that the story didn't end there. We know that he didn't die. 
he was he rose again and now he acts as our permanent high priest our permanent mediator to atone for the sins of our past the present and the future and this when it's for this very reason we are be able to go to him go to god confident that he be able to hear our prayers and he may give us grace and provide us with help in our time of need I find great comfort in knowing that in whatever trial or temptation I face, Christ also endured to the full while he doing his ministry on earth. When I'm downhearted or when I'm brought down to my knees and with tearful prayers, I know that Christ is someone who mourned with me. He mourned as well when his best friend Lazarus died. And when I am choosing between my own will over the will of God in my life, I know I can surrender even that unto Him in prayer. He too struggled the same way in the Garden of Gethsemane. See, our Lord Jesus Christ is not someone who is indifferent to our struggles, nor is He someone who is detached from the experience of pain. He understands the suffering and the pains that we are going through even right now, and therefore. Our prayers before Him, and every tear that we shed, will not be in vain. May I encourage you, Church, to go to God in prayer, just like the author of Hebrews encourages us to go to God in prayer. Not by turning away from Him, not by thinking that He doesn't care anymore, but to go with Him, His throne of grace, with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And you and I can do that today. Because we have Jesus Christ as our permanent high priest. God bless you, Church. I hope to see all of you very soon.